So I've been playing around with game corruptions for about a week, and I've realized that there aren't very many up-to-date tutorials for just the basics of corruptions and what beginners should know. There are quite a few newcomers in the RTC development discord server that cannot find any lead on what to do, so I'm making this video in hopes that it will help new corruption enthusiasts enjoy the wonders and terrors of game corruption and help contribute to the corrupting community. Before I begin, I'd like to point out that you don't need a copy of BizHawk or Neri's Mod Dolphin to start, because the RTC launcher installs its own versions for you. The most you'll have to do is install the BizHawk prerequisites if you're using BizHawk, which I will link in the description, and of course you'll need the files of whatever games you'd like to corrupt. First, download the RTC launcher from redscientist.com. I'll include a link to the download in the description. Place the launcher in its own folder and launch it. It would be wise to note that Windows Firewall and some anti-spyware programs may freak out while you're installing or corrupting, but these are merely false positives. These programs do alter memory, but these changes are of no danger to your computer. If you'd like to look at RTC's inner workings, you can view the open source project through the link in the description. When you open the launcher, you'll see a mostly blank window with the version downloader button in the bottom left corner. Click this button, and you'll see all of the stable versions of RTC available for download. As of this video, Vanguard is only available through development versions, which you can access by clicking the Dev Builds checkbox 10 times, but a stable release of RTCV should be available soon. The latest version of RTCV should be at the top of the version list. Today, the latest dev version is RTCV 026. Click on the latest version and download it. When it finishes, you should see your downloaded RTC's version number on the left. Click on it, and you'll see all of the corruption tools that RTC has to offer. For this video, I'll only be focusing on Dolphin, which is for GameCube and Wii games, but corrupting games on BizHawk should be similar to corrupting on Dolphin. Click on the button with Dolphin on it, and download it. This is not regular Dolphin. There are mods applied to this version of Dolphin that allow you to corrupt games with it. When Dolphin is installed, a green bar will appear on the Dolphin button, letting you know it's ready for use. Click on the Dolphin button to open it. Some command prompt windows will appear and close themselves as RTC boots. Both the real-time corruptor and Dolphin should open and connect to each other. You use this version of Dolphin almost exactly as you would use a usual version of Dolphin, so go ahead and add a game file path and load up some games to add save files to them as you would normally. I'll be corrupting Kirby's Epic Yarn for this video. Adjust Dolphin settings to fit your needs, but be warned that certain remote settings and audio settings will affect any corruptions and stockpiles you make, and may make them play improperly for other people. Once you've got yourself settled, close the emulation and pull up RTC again. We're almost ready to start corrupting. Before we start, let me show you some basic functions of the real-time corruptor and how to use them. RTC opens up at the Engine Config section. For beginning users, we'll only focus on the General Parameters, Corruption Engine, and Memory Domains boxes. In the General Parameters box, you can adjust the intensity and types of your blasts and how much of the game is targeted. In the Corruption Engine box, you can set what Corruption Engine you would like to use. There are many methods to corrupting. You can play around with these to your heart's content, but there are only a handful of settings that get you interesting results that don't crash. For Wii games like the one I'll be corrupting, you'll want to primarily stick with the vector engine. To start off, set the limiter list to 1 and the value list to 2+, and crank the intensity to its highest value. The memory domains box allows you to select which domains of the game's memory you would like to blast. I'm no expert on how these work, but for Wii games it's usually safe to target everything. For games on older systems, some domains are much harder to corrupt without crashing. While you're corrupting, you can change any of these settings on the fly and get different results, so don't be afraid to experiment. We're now ready to open the game. In Dolphin, open up the game you want to corrupt. Get to a spot in the game you would like to blast. Let's start with the title screen. Get to a point just before the title screen starts and pause the emulation. Go back to the RTC window and click Glitch Harvester on the left. This will open a new window. Keep in mind that if you want to change the corruption engine or the domains you're blasting, you'll need to do it in the main RTC window, not in the Glitch Harvester. In the Glitch Harvester, there's a big red button that says Corrupt. 
Although it's tempting, we're still not ready to corrupt just yet. We first need to make a save state of the title screen. A save state stores all of the game's information in the moment, so when you load that save state, you are returned to exactly where you saved. When we corrupt a game, we are actually corrupting one of these save states. So on the left side of the glitch harvester is the save state manager. It's empty right now, but we're about to add our first save state to it. Click on the number 0 to select that save state slot. Then, click the change button to change the green load button to a red save button, and then click save. You'll be prompted to give a name to the save state, so name it whatever you want, and click on the zero slot button again to set that name. Now, with the zero slot selected, you can press the green load button to load that save state at any time. Go ahead and try it several times. This is how to load a save state without corruptions applied to it. Now, we're finally ready to begin corruptions. Click the corrupt button in the glitch harvester. A new corruption ID number will appear in the stash history, and Dolphin will automatically load the selected save state and apply that corruption to it. Congratulations! You just corrupted the game. Hopefully it caused something notably different, and hopefully it didn't crash. You can press the corrupt button as many times as you'd like to apply different corruptions to the save state. To apply a past corruption, just click on that corruption's ID in the stash history. As stated earlier, if you want to load the save state without corruptions, just click the green load button in the save state manager and you can now play the game as usual. To add another save state to the save state manager, just find another spot in the game you'd like to corrupt and follow the previous steps to make a save state, this time using the one slot. You can add as many save states as you'd like to the manager. If you'd like to save your save states to use them later, Use the white save button at the bottom of the save state manager to save a SSK file that contains all of the save states. To access the save states again, click the white load button and select that SSK file. Let's assume you get an amazing corruption and you want to save it. To save a corruption, you add it to a corruption stockpile. If you've watched Vinny's corruption streams, you should be familiar with this phrase. To add a corruption to your stockpile manager, make sure your desired corruption is highlighted in the stash history, and then click the To Stockpile button. You'll be prompted to give your corruption a name. Once you've given it a name, your corruption will be added to the stockpile. From there, you can use the stockpile management buttons to rename or remove the highlighted corruption, and you can use the arrow buttons to move the highlighted corruption up and down the stockpile's list order. You can also click on the white box on the stockpile listing to add notes to the corruption to point out anything of importance or details that could easily be missed. Repeat all of the steps for save states and corruptions as many times as you want until you have a stockpile to your liking. To save your stockpile as a SKS file, click the Save As button. This will close the emulation, but this is no big deal. Loading a save state or corruption will open up the emulation again. And there you have it, your first stockpile. There are several things I'd like to make note of before I end the video. First, if a corruption causes the emulation to freeze or crash, and you cannot load a save state to fix it, you can hit the kill switch button on the main RTC window to forcefully close it. When the kill switch activates, you should hear plates breaking. Activating the kill switch will not lose your save states or your corruptions in the stash or in the stockpile, and RTC will automatically start up the emulation program again, so there's nothing to worry about if something goes wrong. However, if you somehow manage to completely break RTC, you will get an error report, and all of your unsaved progress may be lost. So be very careful, and don't go completely crazy with your corruption blasts. Secondly, if you get a corruption that you want to put in your stockpile, it may be best to sanitize it. This means you get rid of all of the unwanted effects of the corruption to leave only the one change you want. To do this, before you send over the corruption to the stockpile, right-click on the corruption's ID in the stash and click Open Selected Item in Blast Editor. This will bring up a window with many buttons on it, but the one you want to press is labeled Sanitize. The Blast Editor will disable certain parts of the blast and reapply it, with a pop-up window asking you if the desired effect is still present. Answer yes or no, and the process of elimination will be repeated until only the desired effect is left. From here, click Send to Stash, and send the sanitized blast to the stash as a brand new entry. You can now add this safer, much more stable corruption to your stockpile.
Another thing RTC allows you to do is merge corruptions, which means you apply one blast to another. If you have two corruptions in your stockpile that you think would go good together, here's how you merge them. First, click on the corruption in your stockpile that has the save state you want. Then hold the control button as you click on the corruption that you'd like to merge with the first. This combination will be added to the stash as a new corruption, and it will automatically be loaded into the emulator. You can now add this new combined corruption to your stockpile. Another very important thing to note is that your stockpile may be saved with its game files. If this happens, you may not be able to distribute your stockpile legally. To fix this, before you save your stockpile, click on the gear next to the save button and make sure the check mark on include reference files is disabled. This will also greatly reduce the size of your stockpile file, making it easier to share with others. One last thing. If you need support with corruptions, or you would like to look further into what RTC can do, you can refer to the online wiki and the RTC Dev Discord server, for which I will leave links in the description. They have helped me troubleshoot a lot of my problems, and it would be a pleasure for you to showcase your corruptions to the community. Thank you for watching, and happy corrupting! Thank <laughs> you.